Okay. Well, okay. I want to see what it is. Okay. They said over happy birthday, happy night, for Ms. Amway. Love you. Many, many continued blessings. My name is Arlie Safali Brown and my lovely sister over here, Kelly Cunningham. We have been drafted to MC Mama Wagner's 90th birthday celebration. We have really been drafted to MC. <laughs> Celebration. We thank God for the blessing. Dana and Patrick. Patrick and Dana. Tell, thank, tell Patrick to come on in. Vicki, will you grab Patrick, please? We're good. Let us have a, a, a silent moment. Let us pray. Oh, heavenly, most wise, divine God, we thank you once again for this day. This day that you have allowed this wonderful lady, 90 years, we thank you for every year. You have blessed her to bless other people, and we thank you. She has taken people in over the years. She has fed people, clothed people, and we thank you. Your spirit has been upon this woman for years. She has touched so many souls. And out of 90 years, we don't know the multiplication of how many people she has touched, she has helped. And we thank you. We thank you for Ann Wagner, Lord. You made a good mold out of a great woman. And we say thank you. So we celebrate this 90 years for her life, her birth, and all that she's done on this day. So we pray in the name of Jesus and let all her folks say, Amen. Amen. Oh, help me, most wise divine God. We thank you to bless this food in the name of Jesus. We pray. Amen. Amen. So I'm greeting all y'all. <laughs> Thanks for coming. Grand Grand, are you listening? <laughs> I'm greeting you. I'm <laughs> greeting you. I'm greeting you. Happy birthday, man. Thanks for everybody for coming, man. We totally blessed for having our minds for the ball. We are really... <laughs> yeah, you gotta turn the mic up. Oh man, I sound like Barry White, don't you? No, you don't. <laughs> <laughs> now we, uh, we really, we really truly blessed. I mean, everybody don't get this blessing all day past this long. And uh, happy birthday, mom. But I got, I got a good story, just not a sad story. You know, when uh, they say, I don't know who started it, but you're supposed to give people their flowers before they die or whatever. I don't even know where it came from. When I grew up, my daddy always gave my mama flowers. Like, he would give uh, Easter, New Year's, uh, in the springtime on the porch, winter, uh, you know, a garden in the backyard. He always gave flowers. So, you always had your flowers. So, what I'm going to do is, I sat down one day and I was like, I can't think of nothing to get you for your birthday. And then I heard Buddy say, boy, you know your mama like flowers. So, I'm gonna go get your gift. Well, I'm so tall, I have to move the mic. Uh, I am going to, we're gonna move forward while he goes to get mom's gift and allow Miss Maddie Jones, her one of her other best friends to come bring some reflections and after Miss Betty Jones, we're with John Johnson. You are now 
the next person to speak. Whether you're ready or not, this is Mama Wagner's I told you what to do and you're going to do it list. But before you two come up, let's go see what these flowers look like. Oh, oh my God. It don't make sense. I got, I was going to get you 90 for your birthday. <laughs> no, give me my flowers. You, you, you can't you have all of them. I can't have all of them. No. That's the one you got to Take those. They're magical. Can I have a red one? Yeah, all of them is yours, girl. She, she all of them is yours. She, she can't sit here and hold 90 flowers. I don't know why. She can't strong 90 years. Oh, wow. She's she she all of them. Let me tell you, you can't have but one. <laughs> So these, 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 these flowers is from everybody, Mama. Mama. Huh? They from everybody. They uh, from your kids, your grandkids, your great great kids. I mean, I guess. Great 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 and great greats and friends and families. I bought one for everybody there to give to you a flower. So, you know, you know what Buddy say. You know your mama wants some flowers. I know, I know, I know. So, and I got us some blue flowers. Oh, Walter. 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 Can you hear me all right? Yes. No. Yes. 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 This is a glorious time for me to be able to sit here with my sister, Ann Wagner. Not only is she my sister in the struggle for freedom and justice and equality for all, she is my sister in Christ. And that makes it to the top of the list. Because through Christ's grace and mercy, Ann and I have been able to go across a many crossroads. We even raised one of our boys together that was trying to get themselves. We were trying to raise one of our boys together that was trying to get out of line. So Ann came to me and she said, what are we going to do with these boys? I said, well, we'll turn them over to my husband. Oh, yeah, I remember that. <laughs> Turner Harris Jones, a school teacher. So in the afternoon, one of the boys, Maurice, had to come to my house to get his homework and everything, and then Ann would call to find out what time he was leaving my house to make sure he got home on time. He didn't have no 30 or 40 minutes to give you 10 minutes to get home and be in the door. So we've come a long ways together, Ann, and to be able to celebrate 90 with you, and I'm very close to the 91 mark. God will continue to bless you for all that you have given. And when you go in the bathroom in the mornings to wash your face, you, I know you feel good because how many young children, and that's it. That's why our children today is way out there in their field. Mm -hmm. And you brought us, our children a long ways. Indeed. You brought this community a long ways. Yes, so I want to say from the deep bottom of my heart mm -hmm. that God bless you. I'll always love you. And I'm so glad that I can say and wife is my sister. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. And I'm not going to sing today. Yeah. Just happy birthday to you. I should tell you all, I hope you can hear me all right. I had a stroke earlier this week. And uh, uh, it's a minor stroke. But I got out of the hospital yesterday. And I, Wanted to be here for Ann. Uh, Ann has meant so much to so many for so long. Uh, she has been my friend for many, many years. And Ann's stuck with the NAACP longer than anybody I know. Uh, I mean, I know folk all over the country. The good Lord's blessed me to see people, but I've never seen one as strong as Ann, as determined as Ann. Even when she was not able to go around and meet with these kids, still trying to encourage them to stay involved in a positive role in their community. And there's so much I could say, but I know there are all kinds of people who want to say things for you. Uh, I just want you to know that we love you. 
this community loves you. You mean much to so many. And thank you for the opportunity to share it with you. Thank you. Now you made it. <laughs> Kelly, do you want to say anything before we have dinner? Oh, it's dinner time? Yeah. Almost, we're going to go ahead and have dinner. Yeah, we're going to do some more reflections, but... How, how are you? So, wait a minute. Everybody not jump up? I'm ready to do that right now. Uh, be your air traffic controller. Yeah, that'll be me. Is that what she is? So it's what I'm going to do is... This table right here, I want y'all to go first, but you don't have to go first. I'll more than gladly serve each one of you your plate. So it's on you, which way you want. Are there any volunteers to help the service? Because it's buffet. We got to make their plates. We got to bring We got to get that. So, y'all want me to bring it to you? Okay. So, so uh, my menu, so that you know, I do tomatoes, fried chicken, salmon, uh, seasonal vegetables, potatoes, and a salad. So, you want a little bit of everything? Yeah. The menu, as she said, is salmon, fried chicken, seasonal vegetables, potatoes, and salad. So they want a little bit of everything. So the first table is going to get a little bit of everything. Right. And Vicky, which tables do you want to go next? I'll take his hand. OK, she's going to come back. I got a little so Miss Wagner is uh, my second mother. My, my first mother is okay with that, and she's the only person that she's okay with that. Uh, they are friends today. They do things that I don't know about, and I hear these things that happen to Frank. Um, but Miss Wagner, I think maybe I was 14, 15 years old, and a guy was dating. Said, come on, let's go to this NAACP council meeting. I'm like, what? So we went to the meeting, and Ms. Wagner said, I need you to do more. And uh, I didn't know what more meant at that time. I definitely didn't know that she planned for me to be her youth council president. Uh, but when Ms. Wagner says you're gonna do something, you're gonna do it, uh, mostly by persuasion. So I think from that, Ms. Wagner saw in me what I didn't see in myself. And you know that is a leader. Uh, she enticed me by taking me on trips, uh, and I didn't even know that I loved to travel. Uh, but we couldn't get on trips if we didn't knock on doors and sell Krispy Kremes. Uh, and, uh, we did that, and we did car washes. We knocked on doors for Mr. Paul Bather, Mr. Reginald Meeks, Mr. Armstrong, and she did not hesitate to take any young person and say, "This is somebody you need to meet." whether it be me or Kelly, whoever. She was like, you need to meet this young person because I'm going to be somebody. Uh, I think our first trip was on the Tom's of Joy bus. And I think it was successful going to Milwaukee. Coming home was a different story. Uh, but we watched The Color Purple. That's how long we were on the side of the road. Um, and then I think we, we watched The Color Purple by the Tones of, Joy, uh, Tones of Joy bus was being worked on. I think we actually had to call another bus to come and get us. But it, it, was, it was a good time. Uh, and then uh, we got really good at raising money and we flew to Chicago. Uh, for a lot of us, that was the first time that we flew. And if I'm not mistaken, the number was somewhere between 30 and 40 years. She also, I know for sure she took me to Canada, and at this time we could cross into Canada with a driver's license. Um, and then as her youth council president, uh, me and Miss Saida Shaw, who was the, was she the national president? Regional president? Either way, we got to go to the Bahamas. Um, and so from that, like, a love of travel, a respect for a person who absolutely sees in you what you don't see in yourself, and uh, who I love to call my second mother. Happy birthday, Miss Wagner. I love you. Is everybody okay? <laughs> This is my third trip. <laughs> we had a, a rough couple of years.
Good evening, everyone. I'm Councilwoman Donna Purvis, and I represent District 5, which is where Miss Ann Wagner lives, and that's how I met her. Um, one chilly Friday evening, I was walking the streets, and I knocked on this lady's door, and she told me to come in. I said, oh, Lord. <laughs> But it was something magical about her, and I shared with her at the time, my mom had been dead for five years, and it was something maternal that I saw in her. And it was instant, it was an instant bond. And I told her that she smelled real clean, <laughs> like my mother always smelled. And even to this day, it doesn't matter when you drop by to see Mother Wagner, she always smells so clean. Oh, right. <laughs> but we talked and talked and talked, and I realized I wasn't talking to a constituent anymore, but I had made a friend in her. And she won't let me forget that we are friends, and that I should always be there when she calls me, That's right. no matter how many times she calls me. And if she's not happy with who picks up the phone when she calls my office, she just hang up on them. <laughs> <laughs> and so I called, I said, Miss Wagner, I heard you hanging up on people. And she told me, well, she wasn't talking about anything anyway. <laughs> so, <laughs> she, I, yes, I am. But, um, you know, I know she calls me and I, I'm really, really, really busy. But she knows that I will show up, come in, and spend some time with her and Lucy. And so I'm so grateful and thankful that she's in my life. Um, she's a special person, that's all I can say. Um, she wants to know it all. Well, we, we surprised her with renaming her street. She had asked me, what do you want with Vicky? What I tell you, Miss Wagner? None of your business. Right. And so uh, I think this was supposed to be a surprise, but somehow or another, did she find out? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Yeah. And so I, I don't, Sharon, I don't know how she did it, how she found out, but like I said, she wants to know everything. That's why we never got away with nothing growing up. Okay. 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 So. But I'm, I'm really, really happy for this occasion, and I'm happy to be here to celebrate her birthday with her. And um, let's hope that she has 90 more. She's, she says she doesn't have that. But anyway, Miss Wagner, happy birthday. I love you. You're welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> All right, all right. My first time at the mic, Kelly Cunningham. Social media calls me Kelly Bebop. And um, I am, as Bridget, a pro as Arlisa, um, a product of Miss Wagner's activism and her advocacy in the NAACP. And I looked at her bio uh, when she was inducted into the Hall of Fame for um, Commission on Human Rights. I believe that's what it is. And it it looked like mine, like I can use it because everything that she has done, every checkbox she has checked, she led me that way. She absolutely led me that way in the NAACP. And I am still actively involved in the NAACP and have been probably since the age of seven. Now, what I thought was if you wash enough cars, sell enough donuts, you can get on a bus and go places. That's what she taught us. <laughs> but now I know it's a little bit deeper than that. 
But that's exactly what we did. As Bridget said, you know, a lot of us flew for the first time underneath her leadership in the NAACP, and we were exposed to presidents and senators and folks that represented our legislation and our city council and our school district, simply because she had us in those rooms. And she knew that because putting us in those rooms would make us better human beings and we could give back to the world as we are now. So as long as we're walking and talking on this earth, she is still living. She is still living, her work is still working. Um, it's not a week or a day that I don't think about her through my work because as if any of you all were involved in NACP, it's not an on or off thing, you're always on. <laughs> you, can't, you cannot turn it off. Uh, it, it's a part of our DNA. So that's, that's my introduction to her, that's how I knew her, because she was my advisor, and I still say that she is my youth council advisor, because technically she still is. <laughs> Although I'm the youth council advisor now, but uh, she's still my advisor, because I still call her. The, the methods have changed, the young people have changed, but the tried and true things that we do, as far as advocacy and getting things done, all that's the same. So she can step right in that role now if she wanted to. But she, she, I told her she needed a part-time job because she, she's expensive. Y'all don't know. She's, she's a, a high ticket, top shelf type chick. <laughs> so um, that's that's pretty much my reflection of her. And of course, as we have gotten older, um, the phone number hasn't changed, the address hasn't changed. You got to call now before you come. We used to just walk in. But now, now you got to call, give us some time to get to the door. But um, she's always there. And that's one thing that I honor in her is that she's always there. She'll always answer the phone. If not, she'll call you back and give you an excuse as to why she didn't answer the phone the first time. But I just thank you, uh, Miss Wagner, for showing me this way. I absolutely love the NAACP. And uh, I love the work that we do. And I say everybody in this room needs to, if you love her, you would take out a membership. I'm not standing up and not doing a membership appeal if, if you know, that's, that's what we do. Ain't that right, Mr. Johnson? Every time we stand up, we stand on them five letters. So uh, $30 for adults, $10 for youth, and I'll take your cash and write you a receipt. That's what we do. But um, so that that's how I was introduced to her. As of now, uh, we're friends. I have a 90-year-old friend. Uh, I can talk to her about anything. She's been through it. She has the receipts uh, for life. And she has wisdom. And if she don't know what to do, she'll pray. Not for you. You know, people say, oh, I hate to hear that. I'll pray for you and keep moving. She says, no, hold on, daughter. Let's pray right now on the phone in person and those prayers work and those prayers have sent many people um, victorious and, and gotten their freedom for whatever trial they're going through so she's one of the first calls I, I make after I've cried a bit um, so we're, we're very close we're, we're, we're uh, girlfriends um, and, and I really appreciate your friendship and you hear me <laughs> so that's that's my spiel um if we can keep going in the program you gonna do yours okay at least it's coming to talk to i think if we get if I get me out the way and get Kelly out the way, then we can get, give the rest of the family a chance to eat. Well, first of all, it was a blessing to be able to be invited to be in this position, but then we were voluntold that we were in sin. Um, it was not an option. So that's an NAACP reflection. My name again is Arlie Safari, Farley Brown, and I have been having the opportunity not only to know her from the NAACP, but know her from Shawnee Terrace. Mama Wagner has raised me my entire life, and my brother Andre Farley was Ruben's buddy, and Maurice, and the two of them caused 
three of them caused more trouble together. Uh, that Mama Wagner was always saying, um, I'm gonna need y'all to shut it down, tone it down, and then Daddy Ralph would have to step in. But it was a blessing because if without them, I can honestly say as Bridget and Kelly, we would not be here. And I know Dana and Diane, we've been on many trips with her. And even Michael Thomas, even though he's not here, and John Johnson, well, they will all keep eyes on us. And even Miss Maddie would keep eyes on us when we were on those NAACP conventions. So, Mama Ann, I'm spelling out your name and talking about you in front of your back and not behind it today. <laughs> so first of all, I would say A stands for anointed woman of God who is always available when you need her to be there for you. N, never accepts the word no. Amen. When she's determined to get you to do something for her, just ask Mr. Frank. He's back here, raise your hand, Mr. Frank. <laughs> right. You can ask Reverend David Burton, John Johnson, and all the many others, even Kelly, Dana, Diane, if she wants something, she's going to call it. Everybody in this family, raise your hand if she told you that you got to do something and it's not an option. Okay. So, and all the members of her family understand this. She remind you, and with these famous words, I'm just 90. I guess God still has me here because you all don't know how to act. If y'all learn how to act right, maybe I can go on home. I said, well, we're going to keep on cutting up and acting a fool, so you'll stay around for a little while longer. The other end stands for no nonsense. It's tolerated. She will correct you as well as direct you when you're doing wrong. But she'll also applaud you when you're doing right. W, she is willing to serve and bless others in her family and has done so for many years. And she has done this not only for Daddy Ralph and Maurice and Reuben and my brother Andre, as I share with you, my mom who has gone on to glory, Mama Ann has stepped in to be my other mother. And then she's also been a reflection of a living legend as she still celebrates the life and le legacy of her siblings that have passed on, Pauline, Daisy, Henry, Lindbergh, and, G and Genevieve, as well as her parents. She said, I'm the only one here. I said, that's okay, you're still representing all of them. She's taking care of her six kids for a lifetime. We got Sharon and Vicki and Beverly. Patrick's out there somewhere, still, still campaigning. Maurice, Reuben. And for those that asked the question, she has 49 grandchildren, great-grandchildren, and great-great-grandchildren, as well as this entire community that she has blessed in so many ways. When you look at the other A in her name, she's a caring, compassionate, loving mother, sister, grandmother, great-grandmother, aunt, and an awesome best friend. You can't ask for anyone any better than that. And she also takes care of Lucy. If anybody has not met the dog Lucy, Lucy is the most spoiled dog in the house. Lucy gets whatever she wants from anybody that comes over and anybody that hangs around Mama Wagner, but she protects Mama Ann. She's G, as you would say, giving of her time, talent, and treasure in order to make a difference in our community and in our lives of those who she has touched, including her Canaan Christian Church family, from Reverend Dr. Walter Malone and his wife Sandra. She's always asking me how's Reverend Cosby and Barnetta doing. And then also the great Reverend Dr. Bishop Lyons, as I call him. So, Dennis Lyons, so I'm sure he will be around at some point today. The other end in her name, I'll say she's notable. Notable for all of her accomplishments and recognized in the state of Kentucky as a Kentucky Colonel by Governor Andy Brashear in many other states, including serving as the NAACP queen. You know all of her titles because we've shared them before, but she's good at bullying all of us and telling us what to do. And then the R stands for being regal and gorgeous diva, who is well respected and recognized in the state of Kentucky as a phenomenal woman. By all who know her for being a true queen, as well as a, as a fashionista. If you know her, when it comes to wearing her hats and her matching outfits, she's well dressed from head to toe. She represents and commands respect in any room that she walks in. 
And with that, she demands everyone's full attention. So with that being said, Mama Ann, you pay attention to me or you giving orders? <laughs> poor, poor Sherry. <laughs> I don't know what she's looking for. Her purse. Her purse. Mama Ann, you're not going anywhere. We'll find your purse in a minute. <laughs> Mama Ann, are you listening to me? <laughs> Mama, Mama Ann, you're demanding, didn't I just say that about you? I want to say happy 90th birthday. We love you. Today is all about you. We thank God for you. You are a blessing to us and you continue to be a blessing of us. You have touched every life in this room in many different ways and you continue to do that. We know that you are a phenomenal woman of God. You know, you have many angels watching over you, including Daddy Ralph, who's trying to keep you out of trouble. But we thank God for the Jeremiah 29 11 that's over your life because you still have more plans, and we that he has more plans in store for you. We want to see you to do another 90 years, but I don't know if you're going to cooperate with that. She's shaking her head now. <laughs> we will continue to celebrate you, not only today, but for the days to come. We love you, we thank God for you, and God bless you. And that's on behalf of this entire room, the entire family, and the entire community, the United States and the world. <laughs> Has Mr. Ollie come in yet? Nope. Yes, I will say something. Canaan? Coach Hayes, where are you? I'm right here. Oh, you've been summoned to the microphone. Oh, okay. <laughs> Once again, you're being volatile. Okay, that's turn. fine. I'm good with this. Uh, glad to be here today. My name is Henry Hayes, Jr. Uh, Ain't Ann has, uh, has meant so much to all of us. Uh, during the time before my dad passed, uh, I remember the joy he would have whenever Ain't Ann would come see him. And uh, we were always glad to see, see her there. Uh, she's the last one standing. But uh, she's going to be standing for a while. Ain't Ann, I just want to say that we love you. I'm glad to be here. And uh, we celebrate you today and every day. Thank you. My name is Gilbert uh, Mills. Sister Wagner is, has been such a blessing in my life. I've met Sister Wagner through Sister White. I'm from Canaan Christian Church. Sister Wagner doesn't call me Brother Mills. She calls me my deacon. So, and, and so since uh, I, I met her, the thing that attracts me so much about her is her love for people. You know, we, we can say we love people, and we can, and we can, we can talk and talk, but Sister Wagner truly loves people, and she loves God. And, and those two things has made her so attractive to me. And, it's, and the other thing that makes her so attractive, she is so sharp. I mean, I, I go visit her, and even in her pajamas, <laughs> she's sharp. This, this, this is, you know, the most uh, uh, glamorous woman I've ever met. And I, I love her dearly because she loves me, and that's, that's very important to me, that she loves me. And, I, I, and I've been called her deacon for, I think, about 20 years now. And, and I, I'm, I'm privileged to be her deacon. And I, and I got the privilege tomorrow to take her to church. She's been calling saying that uh, tomorrow's going to be a uh, Sister Wagner's day at the Canyon Christian Church. Oh, 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 oh. Love you, Sister Mac Wagner. I'll be leaving her early today. I won't stay till 7 o'clock, but I'll be down there to get you in the morning. And you know what I'm doing. All right. Love you. Thank <laughs> you.
Watch it. Almost fell in the river. <laughs> but, uh, wash that blue off of you. <laughs> and then they want me to sing this song to you. They didn't tell me what to sing. Blues, uh, R&B, uh, hard rock, whatever. So I think I'm gonna sing this song to you. But it's 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 a song that you would sing to somebody that you really in love with. Okay. Love that played this game so me so long. Oh, boy. <laughs> I started to believe I never find anyone. Time had tried to convince me to give in to you gave me but one day the sun it came of shining through the rain had stopped but the skies were blue and oh what a revelation to see Someone was saying, I love you to me. Oh, one in a million. That's all I'm going to say. Hey, hey, y'all, it's not the same going. <laughs> 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 All right, next, do we have Fred Wagner in the building? Fred Wagner? Nope. All right, did we already hear from Andy? Andy Hayes? Did he hear? Come on around to the microphone. First, I'd like to say is happy birthday to cousin, and I hope you have many, 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 many more birthdays. <laughs> God's been good to you, and, and, and it shows and how everybody loves you. And I know the Hayes will love you. You know I love you. So happy birthday. It's Dunlap. Nikki Dunlap. <laughs> Hello. Well, last Saturday I was sitting on my porch and I was told that I would be speaking today. And I was like, huh? They said yes, but that's fine because that's the only because summertime is coming, Miss Wagon. And you know who's in charge then, right? Me. So we're gonna be all the way together. And I love Miss Wagner. Over these past few years, and we've been live I've been living next door to Miss Wagner since what, ninety one? But these past few years I can say have been some of the most memorable years that I've had, especially in the summertime because we are both sitting out on the porch till all hours of the evening. And I sit out there on that porch, as long as she's sitting out there on that porch, if it gets dark, guess what? I'm sitting out there on that porch until she decides to go in. Because I want to make sure that she is all right in every way, shape, fashion, and form. This past summer, what I did is, is for the first time, I planted flowers on my porch. She's like, Nikki, there's no flowers on the porch. There's no flowers on the porch. And this year, this past summer, I did flowers. And she started me off with a few, and from there it grew and grew and grew. And I even took her some flowers. We could call us the flower ladies. <laughs> so I just want to let you know, summer's on the way. You know, it's going to be daylight a little longer, and we're going to start working on those porches with them flowers. So get ready, because I'm going to be dropping flowers off on the porch all the time. Thank you, Miss Wagner, for being a part of my life. 
I love you. I want to talk about me. <laughs> I sat down for so long. She get up. She get up. She look. She said, "Now I got to go in the house." Miss <laughs> Wagner, you got to go in the house, don't you? I said, "Well." Yeah, you gotta go in the house because I'm not gonna leave you out here by yourself. <laughs> I walked to the, um, I got about three steps. I walk over on the ledge and I put my hand up. Here come this. <laughs> you gonna fall on your head. Back up. <laughs> yes, I do. Make a back up. I ain't on. got but three, three steps, you know? <laughs> <laughs> But that's my current neighbor. Oh, oh, you know, Nikki's gonna take care of me. Oh, I love you, you this way. Love you, baby. Love you. Yeah, it's, it's getting warm, so it's time for the porch patrol to be in full gear. Um, I know with Miss Wagner sitting on that porch, nothing gets past her. Uh, she could tell you what everybody is doing and when they left, when they come back, what time they went to church, who they took in their house. I'm not playing. Uh, <laughs> she can tell you. She can tell you what's going on on the block. Now, you're the council person, but she runs the neighborhood, so there's a difference. <laughs> but uh, you know, we we all love to sit on the porch. I think that's a pastime, and it has been for as long as I've. Been you know, been alive. If she's on the porch, we gotta pull over. We gotta spend some time with her. So um, let's make sure we do that if we're not doing that. Um, I was helping plan another 90th birthday party today. So 1934 must have been a really good year where it was some good stuff going on uh, in the water. <laughs> It made all of these folk get bored and still be here. <laughs> so uh, we are we are very honored to have all of our seniors um, and all of those to still be here on earth giving us wisdom because some of the generations that come behind them, I don't know. Um, I don't know. We're going to pray for them, right? We're going to pray for them. Ain't that right? Uh-huh. Um, one quick funny story. Of course, we, take, we took a lot of trips and we still do with the NAACP. And we can't take this day um, or, or go through this day without mentioning Reuben. Uh, we would wonder how she knew after she had went to sleep all of our whereabouts. Um, and, you know, we had a curfew, but we wouldn't follow it. I mean, we're in a, a, a big city. There's parties going on. We got people from different states, you know, we might be a little hot in the pants, like to meet people from everywhere. But she, she knew the game. And one time we tried to sneak out and we opened the door really quietly. She was smart enough not to ever room on the same floor as us. But we opened the door and Ruben was asleep in the hall. <laughs> and as soon as the door clicks, uh, he woke right up. And we slammed the door, and then the next morning when we got to meet, and she said, "Oh, I heard y'all tried to sneak out last night." <laughs> so, so he was a uh, Reuben was was a uh, very vital uh, in the NAACP and in the community. He he was most definitely um, a vessel directly from her vein. Um, he loved like she did. He had compassion like she did, and he had that that advocacy drive like she does. He even went so far one trip as to count the number of rooms because we were still woke. You know, I, the hotel kind of did a, a V so you can look across and see the room. He counted the room and somebody called the room and said, why are y'all still woke? We hung up. He's like, who knows us here? <laughs> Picked up the phone again. He said, it's Ruben. Go to bed. <laughs> so that, that was a... Uh, Actually, her speaking of you know through him, so they they both kept us in line very well, and um, we're we're just here to celebrate her life and and everything and everybody that has come from her and and, and have survived through the prayers of this faithful and phenomenal woman. So, I think we have covered the program. Nope, we got one more. What we got to do? Just go to.
Want me to scoot over? Yeah. You got that bag. I got it from Mama Wagner. <laughs> we have a surprise coming that it was not necessarily planned, but this is her birthday, so we get to do we get to do things without her knowing it. Fix your face, Mama Ann. I see that. So, a surprise. Are you ready? Come on over. Make sure you introduce yourself. Make sure you introduce yourself. Come on this way, and uh, we'll go from there. Hello everyone. Hello. Uh, my name is Jalen Kemp. Um, I am Dana's son. I am Amos's grandson. Um, I am Miss Anne's um, great nephew. Great nephew. Great nephew. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Can everyone hear me? There you go. All right, well, this was supposed to just be a, a personal present for my, my Aunt Andrea, but now I got to get this big old presentation. So here we go. Um, since I've come home to Louisville, I've been doing genealogy work, um, just trying to figure out about our family and such. Um, and I've gotten you know, pretty far back. Um, so I guess we'll just read some names. Okay, let's start with this. So I've done this by collecting census reports. Um, I'll get some context, um, except for big cousin over there wanted me to explain. Um, since 1790, after the American Revolution, um, the United States has been keeping its population count and enumerating its citizens. Um, at one point in time, obviously, most of us in this room weren't citizens. And some of us may have been prior to the end of the Civil War. Um, so after the Civil War, um, the first census that all of our family members would begin to appear on if they were enslaved prior would be the 1870 census. Um, so I've gotten as far back as the 1870 census in terms of my mother's family. Um, and the 1850 census, excuse me. Um, so I've ordered this and organized it to begin um, in 1940 um, with Grandpa Gordy and Grandpa Martha and all their children, Genevieve, Henry, Lindbergh, Daisy May, and, and Pauline. Martha is the child of Melissa and Daniel Ingram. Okay, um, also birthed by the two would be Margaret, Henry, oh, this was hard to read, Laura, I don't know, might have been Eula or Yuda, John, I oh, know, Virgie, Martha, Richie, Joe, quite a few, quite a few. Our Ingram family is also from Hickman, Tennessee. Um, our Crenshaw family, which is who Melissa comes through, um, they travel to Kentucky through Virginia. Let me continue. Okay, so Melissa Ingram, um, she was birthed by Bob Johnson and Laura Crenshaw. So Crenshaw, as I mentioned. Um, this is the 1870 census for Metcalf County in Kentucky. Um, it lists George Crenshaw, Mariah Crenshaw, Joshua, Laura B. Crenshaw, Amanda, Eugene, John, and Will. This I am not completely sure about, but someone also doing their genealogy followed George Crenshaw and Ezekiel Crenshaw and Winifred Crenshaw as kin, um, considering that they are, me, considering that they are within, I think it's three or four dwellings um, from one another. So Ezekiel and Winifred are on, uh, I don't know which page, I see other senses. Let's say they're on page 79, and if you flip to page 80, you'll find George and his family, the only Crenshaws in Metcalf County who are from Virginia, 
um, and who are all listed as black and mulatto. So it may hold weight that they are family. Um, and if so, then Winifred, who was 83 in 1870, would have been born in, oh Lord. Thank you so much, 1797. <laughs> Thank you. Um, okay, I'll continue. Um, so we've gotten as far back as one of our kin being born in 1797 in Virginia. Um, 1870 once again and this one took some searching now we find Robert Johnson also known as Bob Johnson um, now everyone in this room is probably at one point in time we all got landing in our family something of that nature um, if that would be the case on this side of the family it would most likely be through Bob Johnson um, who has always been listed as a mulatto more context since the act concerning servants and slaves of Virginia before the formation of the United States, the child of the Indian inside of the Virginia colony would formally be known as a mulatto. So the term mulatto loosely is used to define um, someone of African origin who would be mixed with European origin, but through what we like to call eugenics, and miseducation, it has been uh, taken out of the mind of most black Americans that the former and first mulatto in the colonies would most likely be the child of an African and an Indian. So when you see this on the census, most likely these mulattoes who don't run back to a person of European origin they're most likely just someone who's listed as looking different than an African, but they're not white, so they're most likely indigenous to this country. So we found Robert Johnson. He was 25 in the year 1870, which means he would be born in 1845. I think Clarissa, also known as Clara Johnson, and all her mulatto came with her are his kin as well. She was free in 1850. She was in one of the surrounding counties in Metcalf. Um, I didn't collect that for this book, so that's just somewhere in my files. Um, before I get to talk of forever, we get to, um, to Julia. And so now we are into um, Goree's side of the family. So his mother's name is Julia. This is a very interesting one. So, Julia Hayes was originally born Julia Gatewood. Um, she, the Gatewoods come from Trimble, Trimble County, Kentucky. Um, originally, they migrated from England to the Virginia colony, um, and then obviously went as far west as Trimble County. Um, our family gets to Barron County via Joseph Gatewood, who would be Julia Gatewood's father. Um, formerly, uh, excuse me, yeah, um, formerly he would be Joseph Fuss Gatewood and his father would be Joseph Gatewood. Um, so, let me get to... In 1850, um, Joseph Gatewood, Mahala Gatewood, Fanny Gatewood, and Joseph Fuss Gatewood are free people of color living in Trimble County. I've actually been to the historical site um, for the Gatewood Plantation. It is located in Oldham County. Um, they are actually a good group of people. They, if any one of our family members would be interested in researching this or even um, working on like archaeological work um, as far as excavating, I think it's how you say that, the, um, the site for the plantation, they do so, uh, I want to say annually or semi-annually, um, and they would love any information they could. Um, that being, the Gatewoods are tied to a famous abolitionist named Henry Bibb. Um, Henry Bibb was once a slave to William Gatewood, who is the, um, I guess you would say, the father of the Gatewood family that concerns us. Um, Henry Bibb's first wife is known as Melinda Gatewood. 
Um, she is known as, in terms of the archaeological society, society says she is Mahala Gatewood's daughter. So that would be Henry Bibb's mother-in-law. Henry Bibb fled from slavery, I want to say in the 1820s. Um, he fled, he got to Ohio, he obviously felt, followed the Underground Railroad route, route going north. Um, but he ventured back once he found a destination up north to go get his family, which would be Melinda. Um, and I want to say he named his first child Francis, similar to Mahalo's um, other child Francis. Um, so he ventured back for them, um, accomplished getting them across the Ohio River. Um, through a different series of events, they were eventually recaptured um, and brought back to the same um, Gatewood Plantation. Um, a, another series of attempts by Henry Bibb gets them free once again. Um, then they were sold down into Louisiana. Um, Henry Bibb was separated from his family once again, trying to make another attempt. Um, and through all of that, him and Melinda were eventually split up. It, it gets interesting, though, because Henry Bibb seemingly still continue with his family in Triple County, um, including his mother-in-law. Um, Mahala Gatewood, as I mentioned, who would be Joseph Fisk's mother, passed in Ontario, Canada in 1886. So she did successfully take the same route that slaves and free people of color took um, up north for a better situation for themselves even though she was free in 1850 and her indenture was to end, I think, in 1820s per the will of um, William Gatewood. Um, but in 1832, the U.S. made it quite difficult for slaves to be manumitted by will of their owner, which is why they stayed enslaved until 1850. Um, so I think that is our short history lesson for the day. <laughs> I don't want to leave out Eliza. Um, that would be Julia's mother. I think she is a Clark, I want to say, but I haven't figured that out yet, but she is from Tennessee um, as well. So thank you for listening. <laughs> Yes, ma'am, let's enjoy it. Why are you there? I just had a highlight for you. I missed a big event. Really quick, I'm Aunt Anza, one of Anza's nieces. My mom was Daisy, and I wanted to bring her family with her for this occasion. So I made this one real quick. It's got the, her grandparents on here, aunts, uncles, uh, parents, and so Oh, my God. So your family's here with you. Well, come on. <laughs> I'm not gonna stop anybody from talking. Unless you keep us from eating cake. <laughs> Once she finished speaking, uh, I'm gonna let Mr. Frank speak on uh, behalf of Reverend Dr. Bishop Lyons and the whole community of Shawnee Terrace. But um, who you? Who you? She's coming. I said after her. Yes, ma'am. You still trying to run the show as usual? <laughs> Didn't I say that? <laughs> I can't help it. Come on, young lady. I'm her oldest niece or well, nephew. I tried to crack it up. Well, <laughs> hey, I, I'm not ashamed. <laughs> Annie Ann has been in my life as long as I can remember. I wanted to be just like her when I grew up, because she was always stylish, and, you know, and you could always talk to her. And I grew up in the country, but we used to go to Louisville in the summer and spend time with Annie Ann, Aunt Pauline, you know, and we just had loads of fun. 
But she's always been an inspiration to me. And uh, I've always I wanted to be just like you when I grew up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, I'm almost there. Not almost, but I'm, I'm in my 70s, you know? So, uh, yeah, yeah. So I, I'm so glad that I could be here today and let you know how much you have influenced my life. Always. Always. When we were little and we used to come from the country to Louisville and play and everything and I mean you were always really sweet but you could be another way if we didn't act up and we didn't act right. So I remember that. But I just want to just tell you how proud I am that you are still here, still going. All is my left. Still yeah, you're right. You're right. Still our Aunt Anne. And and I love you so very much. I love you. God bless you. Thank you. We're gonna sing happy birthday. Some who's leading this day yeah. and day? Oh, okay. Not just yet. Not just yet. Not just yet. Give us about a couple more minutes. Please. Oh, they need a few more minutes. Okay, Mr. Frank, come on up, Mr. Frank Anderson. Good evening, family and friends. Good evening, family and friends. Good evening. Met Miss Wagner. Oh, I can't remember how many years ago. But uh, she was a good friend of my neighbor across the street, Miss Brown, which is Lisa's mother, and uh, Mr. Wa Mr. Wagner, Mr. Ralph. He would come down every summer, and he would fertilize um, Miss Brown's yard, and he'd keep her grass cut. And from there, I got to know him, and then, uh, fortunately. She lives at one, they live at 120 South Shiny Terrace. I live at 320 South Shiny Terrace. <laughs> so then I went down to visit him one day, then I got to meet his wonderful wife. And from then on, relationship grew, friendship grew. But as I look around this, uh, this gathering here, young man that was standing up here giving, the nephew that was standing up here giving, the genealogy. Let's get a little bit quiet, a little bit loud now. I'm going to try to speak a little bit loud because this is something we need to know. This lady, that's a legacy. We're here because of a legacy. We're here because of a legacy. And just think, if she'd never been born, it never would be a gathering here today. Never been a family so big that would be intertwined, that will have a feeders that go out all over this city, all over this country, to where there would be other persons that would be going out because of her legacy, because of her, her and Mr. Rash union and their family but uh, we heard uh, from Miss Lisa here and Miss Bridget and, and Miss Kim well, they were talking about the impression and how Miss Wagner made an impression in their lives am I making an impression in somebody's young life in a young person's life to where they would grow up and to be a help to society. We uh, can bother, uh, be an impression, or help somebody to be the next doctor, the next lawyer, next president. We already found that out. That's right. So we have a lot to do because we always, I always hear people talk about we have a lost generation of children. How can they be lost if they're in your household? How can they be lost if they're walking in your neighborhood? How can they be lost if they pass your house? How can they be lost? And what this means when I go to churches, I hear pastors, preachers say, who are supposed to help say, give us the knowledge that we need to be saved and teach us about God for a man of cloth to say that we have a lost generation 
when a lot of these children are sitting in your churches, in your pews, and they are children and grandchildren from the people who have been in your congregation for years. They can't be lost. This lady here, she worries about the little children down the street all the time. Mr. Frank, have you seen the little girl down the street? Mr. Frank, have you seen the little boy down the street? Go knock on the door and see if they are all right. These are the concerns that she has about the future generation. These are the concerns that we need to have about the future generation. Because as we look around and we listen to every day in Frankfurt, they're changing legislation concerning our schools, trying to bust up our schools, coming up with all kind of different legislation that we black folks aren't even aware of. These are things that she fought for. This Betty Jones fought for. And even at their age, they still out there on the, on the picket lines, still fighting. Phone calls, calling people, phone people, calling people that they know that might still be out there in the fight, trying to get them to even come forward and to help to find this generation, to help this generation out. So we have to start realizing what our future is. Our future are young people. And I'm so glad to have met Ms. Wagner and be a part of our life, and even Ms. Jones to be a part of our life because I still see her out at public meetings when I'm out there at public meetings. So get involved in your community and help save our young people. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we're going to try to have a little dessert. Mama, there. I was getting on here to tell them. <laughs> oh. Yeah, I got you. So uh, we're going to pause uh, the celebrations for a little bit, Granny, so we can sing you happy birthday and get some cake going. Does that sound good? I mean, if you want to, you want to sing? Okay, okay. Uh, we're going to sing together. I'm, I'm not going to sing myself. I'm not going to come up off this mic when we start singing. <laughs> All right, y'all ready? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear lady. Happy birthday to you. Hey, Gary, and now I'm going to take some so as everybody knows, Miss Ann is known for her heads. So we had this cake made like a head. So it could be special and personalized for my friend. Yes, ma'am. Happy birthday to Happy birthday.
Thank you, Lynn. She's trying to get by so she can get to the mic. Thank you. I'm sorry, my voice is kind of gone today. My voice is kind of gone today. But I've had the pleasure of knowing Miss Wagner for over 10 years now. I started out as her housekeeper and she very quickly became one of my very best friends. She's so easy to talk to. My children look up to her. I mean, we just admire you. You're, you're awesome. And I'm, I'm very privileged that you are a part of my life. And if I could be half the woman that you are, I'd be doing something, girl. So he's he stayed at home, <laughs> but I love you. Sister Ann, I've been knowing her. Sister Ann, right now, I've been knowing her. That's her husband, Ralph, and I have cousins. So we just grew up together. Just to visit her, and Ralph, sit on the porch and talk. I'm taking care. I'm starting to let my. I got it. Okay. Well, we used to sit on the porch and talk, <clears throat> but Anne has always been a, a wonderful lady, sweet lady, and her and my mother are close friends. They talk, talk to each other all the time on the phone, and uh, they love each other, and uh, my mom, she was going to be a um, hundred... She's 99. She's 99. She'll be 100 years old. She loved to see you. Yes. And, uh, and I just want to say that I love you. And uh, my wife and I both we love you because you're a wonderful, sweet person. You always have been. Thank you. I surprised you. Yeah. Hi, darling. We live right around the corner. Well, life does that sometimes. But we're here. And I am so proud to be here to celebrate your 90th birthday with you. I remember way back when I first met you. And it was over our boys because they didn't want to come in at sundown. So they started spending the night with each other. And our husbands worked together and fished together and did all that kind of stuff. And I look up to you as a woman of God always. I love you. I'm so proud of you and I hope to be just like you. I'm almost there at 77. I'm, I'm, I'm trying. But I just want to tell you that I love you, Anne, and I'm so proud you're here with us. Have a blessed day. Have a happy life. Okay, we have here. Thank you. Okay, wait a minute. <laughs> oh, Thank <laughs> you. 